with this set here, now I, all I have to do is get my liner up higher than this area over in there and make sure that water weeps there. Now what'll happen though a lot, and so people will bring their liner up high like this, right in here. This is pretty easy to hide. We just put some little rocks here, but because of the way this rock sits so flat down at the bottom and the way I'm gonna pack soil in here, if you come around this backside, you can see that here's our other liner. This all has to still get built up with soil. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, I haven't created a place for water to escape. Even though I'm gonna foam a big rock in here to keep that water pushed that way, water's still gonna migrate a little bit underneath that foam, no matter how good of a job I do. As that water comes down through here, it needs another place to escape. that wing wall rock. The liner is in over here. We've got the overlap. So there's just some challenges that you ran into, or that we ran into, but that you're addressing. How? Anyway, you start over. <laughs> <laughs> so I, think, I think this is a probably a super common area that people run into and they just don't know where to go from here and what to do with the liner. We'll call it our vault liner, the main liner that goes down underneath the aqua blocks. It's the one that you know was supposed to come all the way up to the top, but it was short and we had to do the bib liner. And we put this wing wall rock in. This kind of frames out that big waterfall area over there. We're not using it at all to hold water back. Remember we said this point was high yep. here, but because I need to bring in soil at least this high in here, this actually becomes kind of a wing wall plus it's retaining soil back behind it. And so what I didn't want to do was bring this liner up high in here. And try and pinch it between the pinch two rocks and have this be on the outside of the liner, yeah, right? bring this on the outside liner. A lot of times that's just a recipe for disaster. You start pinching liner and it gets hold. More importantly, if that liner came in like this in here, then I'd have to put little rocks in here, which is gonna look ridiculous next to these big ones. We always go with a minimum of a 15 foot wide piece of liner, so we have lots of room to expand out to the left and right. With this set here, now I, all I have to do is get my liner up higher than this area over in there and make sure that water weeps there. Now what'll happen though a lot, and so people will bring their liner up high like this, right in here. This is pretty easy to hide. We just put some little rocks here, but because of the way this rock sits so flat down at the bottom and the way I'm gonna pack soil in here, if you come around this backside, you can see that here's our other liner. This all has to still get built up with soil. Mm -hmm. And as that happens, I haven't created a place for water to escape. Even though I'm gonna foam a big rock in here to keep that water pushed that way, water's still gonna migrate a little bit underneath that foam, no matter how good of a job I do. As that water comes down through here, it needs another place to escape. You could easily just come like this, put a gravel vein here. Sometimes we even do a little pipe and run a pipe around here and go that way. But what I did before we set this rock, try to give you the best angle, is underneath this thing, I dug a trench before I put the liner down. So look at how this goes down. Oh, gotcha, so you're way down there. Wrist and fist, like get underneath There's, there. I can put my whole arm underneath that and it comes out over okay. here. Got it. So this stays high, this stays low. This will get filled with big gravel. Really important that this is big gravel, not little gravel. Little gravel will get clogged over time and it's harder for water to pass through that little gravel. Big cobbly type stuff is that much better. So I've created a weep hole. I'm a little afraid it's not big enough. So I think what I want to do is even pull this liner back and maybe dig out to here, yep. create a bigger depression. So anything that would migrate this way falls into that bowl, goes underneath this rock, and then goes back in that way. So because that depression is lower than where the height of our liner back here will be. Yep. So you're just creating a controlled leak, essentially. It's basically, that's the best way to put it. It's a controlled leak. Now the idea is when I get up in here, I want to foam underneath this rock, yep. and then I want to foam this really, really good to keep the water that's moving through here down to the slowest trickle. If I can get it to drop, 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 then I'll be good. But even if it's a little bit of a stream and I messed up, the idea is that I'm catching all of that and it's running underneath this rock and going back in that way. Gotcha. What you don't want to do 
is then obviously seal this off. Like I don't want when we start packing the dirt back into here, I want to pack that dirt up to about here and then stop. I don't want to try to push it all the way in here because that's really going to put a cork in my controlled leak area. Yep. And so that's how we tackle a lot of our edges. You know, as we get closer to the perimeter, we do these more controlled leaks. Now, if you hadn't thought of it there, you could still come back over here Please. and do it on this side. So what I would do, if I knew water was going to come around that side, I'd fold this back, dig out. So you're just digging a trench outside, outside of the liner of so the liner will dip down. Yep. So then this liner would go like that. I could still bring this up this high, but you see this cavity. Yep. yep. It would follow that and then I would run this all the way back to there. I so mean, it's I, I a say, fail safe. And the best thing to do, you guys, is this just comes again from experience and we've created too many ponds that leak on the edges or waterfalls that leak on the edges. In fact, 99% of your um, features that leak are gonna be in the waterfalls and that's usually where they're at, these perimeter areas. It's not because of holes in the liner, even though you should be careful, but it's in these areas. What I would suggest to everybody, especially on something bigger like this, especially when you're gonna use two bigger pumps, don't trim any of this liner until the whole thing's running. You want to see what that water is doing and then start adjusting your edges accordingly. There's nothing worse than you finishing all this up, thinking everything's good, and you're coming back two days later and you see like you've got a big leak and you got to fix it. Once these big rocks are set, it's really difficult to fix all that stuff. So just a little pointer. I think we'll come back, like I said, dig this out a little bit bigger, get more of a weep hole in there, then probably get one more rock stuck in here, and then we'll backfill all this with soil and then gravel in that pocket there. Cool. that big pocket and now we're filling this area with just a bunch of cobble not even gravel because remember when I was saying that small little gravel will clog up big gravel can kind of do it too so here we're just trying to keep those interstitial spaces really open allowing water to effortlessly move through here then into that bowl that I carved out down at the base of this rock and then through that trough again we'll still come in here we're gonna find another rock to come here seal this really good keep this as a drip 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 coming through there and then I've now backfilled up to Two of these cobbles. So we have, you know, about a cobble stacked about that high. We'll just continue to backfill up to them. I can even bring cobbles all the way up into here and do more of this land side type look as long as I seal this really good. And you were talking about sealing the backside of this rock because of the waterfall, just to keep as much water away from this. Well, what happens, so look at the height. Let's use this level. Look at the height of the water coming in here. So water's gonna be this high in here, right? So I wanna seal underneath this. The bottom of this rock is super flat, but not that flat. Water are still gonna pull up underneath and around this. So we'll come in around this rock and pack really, really tight underneath it, especially on the backside. But if I can get my hand under here, water's gonna find that for sure. And so I'm gonna wanna seal all of this up in here, really minimizing how much water could leak out from this area. Yep. I think these are the areas that people forget about. I think a lot of people forget that water can still travel underneath this stuff. They'll seal up here, they'll seal here, they'll seal this one. But this rock still allows water to come underneath it, around it. And so if water started coming in from under this spot here, even if I didn't foam it, right, at least I've got this big cavity where everything will funnel down in there and then move out underneath this rock. In fact, I'm hoping we don't seal it that good and I can actually show you guys how much water is coming in there. I'm gonna try to seal it as good as I can to eliminate that, but water pooling up this high in here, no matter how much I try to foam this stuff around it, I know I'm gonna get that trickle coming through here. It also allows us this big void. Look at the height of this rock compared to that one over there. It's not that much higher. Normally we would want this rock this high to really make sure all that water goes this way. With this big cavity right here, I know water will never get to the point where it comes over this because it's gonna fall through all of this. So it also allows like some tricks when doing your rocks and designs and everything else. Keep rocks a little bit lower in profile rather than big irregular things jetting up all over the place. So we're running the plumbing. Remember, we're gonna do two solid handling five to nine. So you can see Chris has re-drilled out these holes to accept that. The five to nines come with a two inch discharge. So we have a two to three inch reducer moving to our three inch line. So we've got a trench dug wide enough for two three inch lines going up to the top. And we really wanted to get this plumbing in before obviously we put this other rock in there and then we can just backfill this and drop one more boulder. The other thing we're gonna do up on top is then obviously bring this to two different spillways. So we'll go up there, show you the trick and how we're gonna do something a little different 
different with the spillways, probably different than what you guys typically see or, or do with them. of the waterfalls here and um, it's not really my favorite part the plumbing but it's very it's a very necessary part because without it nothing really works so we've got our pumps and everything hooked down there we've got our three inch line coming up here remember when you're doing bigger pumps anything really bigger than 5,000 5,500 gallons per hour you want to open that stuff up to three inch pipe if you use two inch pipe you're really going to restrict the flow you'll never get what you expected to get out over the waterfall more importantly you can actually burn out your pump right so you want to give the pump the bigger pumps room to kind of breathe and move through that pipe really effortlessly. As we come up into the top, it's a very typical way of doing it is just bring the pipe up and over the liner and just dumping it in. The problem with that is as we built this berm up, things tend to want to settle quite a bit, especially the berm on the outside. And as that stuff settles, your pipe and stuff can settle down with it, causing it to leak. So what we see a lot of times is the pipe comes in up and over the liner like so, discharges with an elbow or something down into here. And everybody thinks that the liner's high here in here but it actually is three inches lower down over here so when we see leaks on older ponds a lot of times it's just coming in going out from underneath this pipe and because of the weight of the pipe and the settling of the berm this can go down further and further and further causing this to be six inches lower and at that point it's really hard to pull this liner back up so whenever possible we try to use our spillways these things are great we'll actually just cut a hole through the liner this just attaches with this bulkhead fitting that's been molded to the back of our spillway water called diffuser and then our plumbing can hook up into here. Now we have a three inch pipe, but this is clearly a two inch fitting. So we put some reducers on the back. A lot of people ask, will that reducer restrict the flow? It won't really reduce the flow as long as you're not running it for more than five, 10 feet at a time. At this little chunk of two inch pipe that's running maybe six inches, we'll be all right. So we're gonna set these up in here. This goes down in here like so. Because I have two of them, you guys are seeing something that we've never done before. We're actually gonna set both of these up on top of each other like this. I just wanted to make sure that this one here was lower than our spillway rock here so I can still effortlessly hide this. Now a lot of people will set this like this. These are for more people you know people that have really used these before. So they'll come in here set this spillway like so getting this black lip just below this area here then they'll come with a rock here a rock here and then something flat on top. To me that's even harder to hide. When I put it in an application like this where I've taken this thing and sunk it all the way down behind this thing now nobody will ever see this this becomes effortless to hide instead now I just have this water will come through here and kind of rise up through this pool and then spill over I can put whatever size rock I wanted to on top of this so if you wanted to use a single go ahead and sink it down the thing you have to be sure of no different than any other pool in your stream this liner back here has to be higher than this right so you can sink it down two feet if you wanted to as long as this liner stays up higher than our spill stone so we're gonna go ahead cut some holes in the liner here and then bring this pipe into here and then we'll show you what that looks like when we're all finished. So we just got the garden hose filling things up. You can see things are pretty level and with garden hose pressure water, we're getting a lot of the water just to come over the top of the rocks. But remember that weep hole we were talking about? Look at this. So we've got a pretty decent trickle of water moving through this area here. So you can see that water coming through there, obviously coming out right where we knew it would come. So we could do two things. We can just accept the fact that our controlled leak is working or I could come back up in here and try to figure out what I didn't foam. But the way things were finished up here, we really intentionally tried to keep edges close. And so it's probably just trickling underneath this rock, moving back around, and then going through all of that gravel down and through there. So I think we'll just leave it and see what happens. I guess the good thing is at least the water is leaking where we want it to go. All right, so that's a wrap. You can tell it's a different day because I got a different dew. <laughs> but our palace is done. I absolutely love the way it turned out. I want to give a special shout out to Chris Hansen, even more special shout out to my nephew Will and my son Matthew for coming out on one of their school days and then insisting that they come back 
and see it running. So they made me drive all the way back home, pick them up, came out here, worked till about six o'clock at night last night with us, just moving mulch and moving plants and everything else. And I think it turned out awesome. Let me show you guys what we built and tell me if who in the world wouldn't want one of these in their yard. There she is. and seating area and everything connected. Hey guys, just a little FYI, this is black crushed granite. It's an awesome substitute for patios. It lasts forever because it's actually stone that's been pulverized down to nothing. We use it a lot for pathways. We use it a lot for small seating areas. It doesn't grow weeds and all that kind of stuff. So it's just an awesome cool thing. And I love the black because of the contrast against the green and everything else. It just makes your plants pop. Here's our waterfall. We've got some great action up in here. We got this nice waterfall stone right here with that kind of U in it. We put a mossy boulder there to kind of redirect some water. I love the different steps that we've got in here. I really love these split waterfalls or when we implement those into our water features. Of course, it all lit up, looks amazing. I love the stone on top, much wider waterfall into a kind of deeper pool up in there. And the plants just scream spring. That was more of an advanced pondless waterfall. Here's that one that we built just a few days ago and still looks incredible. And what I think is so amazing is that both of these are built with the exact same principles. Big rock on one side, big rock on the other side, something in between, totally two different looks. But if you can build the small one, you can build the big one. The only thing different is we need a machine to set some of the rocks. We've got a little bit bigger pump. We've got a little bit bigger hose. We've got a little bit more liner, but we still have stone on top of rubber liner and how you place those stones determine what it's gonna look like. Here's just a recap of that small one. And so I think either one of these would just look incredible in anybody's yards. Pondless waterfalls are perfect for those people that don't want to get into the hobby of the fish, don't want water lilies, don't want stuff like that. They just want the aesthetics of a beautiful looking waterfall without the maintenance of a pond. I'm not going to tell you a pond is a lot of maintenance. If you spend 12 minutes a week with the average size pond, that pond's going to look better and better and better. A pondless waterfall is not maintenance free, but it's about as close to maintenance free as you can possibly get. A pondless waterfall of this size would take probably about three minutes a week or three minutes every other week to maintain it. Really simple, but still gives you quite an impact in a pretty unused space in a backyard. Hey, I hope you liked this version of our Sunday video. Let me know which one you like better, the small one, the large one, which one fits better in your yard, and tell all your friends, you know the routine, like, comment, share, and we'll keep doing it. Bye.